Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. This is 7 at 7 from the Las Vegas Review-Journal. Good morning, everyone. I'm Renee Semerauer. Let's get right to our top stories this morning, brought to you by Nevada Hand's Silver Sky Assistant Living Community. Learn more at nevadahand.org. We start with a touching story from the Calder Fire near Lake Tahoe. 75-year-old Mr. Lewis was put on a shuttle to Reno as thousands of South Lake Tahoe residents evacuated the area. His caretaker, Valerie Bridges, was separated from him for three days, but they recently reunited. That says, no, Mr. Lewis, it's me. He goes, I know that voice. I go, you gonna marry me or what? And he goes, oh, I surely know who that is. And he turns around and grabs me, so we give this embracing hug. He and he wouldn't let go. We're less than a week away from the anniversary of 9-11, and even though it happened two decades ago, many people, especially first responders, remember it like it was yesterday. Review Journal's Jen Ah has the story of a retired New York City firefighter who now lives right here in Vegas. Jen? Renee, Ed Bergen told us his story in such incredible detail. He was living in New York, woke up on his first day off, officially retired after 23 years as a New York City firefighter when he walked downstairs to find his wife crying. Yeah, so what's, what's the problem? Then I saw for myself. Then a few minutes after that, I saw the other plane come in. Terrorists from Al-Qaeda had hijacked four planes, crashing two of them into the World Trade Center and a third into the Pentagon killing thousands. After watching the collapse on TV, Bergen, who was supposed to be retired, grabbed his gear and drove to Manhattan. It was overwhelming. It was kind of like every, I don't think any rescues were going to be taking place when I got there. It seemed like very still, very complete catastrophe. Bergen lost many colleagues and friends that day. Still, to this day, he keeps a piece of them on display in his living room. He says it's important to carry on with life, but just as important to never forget. For the Las Vegas Review-Journal, I'm Jen Ah. In your health news, sponsored by 4M Dental Love Your Smile, again, the latest reports from the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention show that more and more children are being hospitalized due to COVID. And local health care workers say that's exactly what they've been seeing. One pediatric infectious disease specialist in Southern Nevada says unvaccinated teenagers are being hit with bad pneumonias. Another doctor says she's seen long COVID impact children as well. Health officials continue to encourage all eligible people to get vaccinated. Now it's time to take a look at your local weather forecast sponsored by One Hour Air. No matter the season, no matter the reason, One Hour Air is here for you. Sunny and hot is forecasted for your Tuesday, but we will see an excessive heat warning through Wednesday. Today's highs topping near 108 degrees, light winds, low 80s for your evening lows. For the rest of the week, we will remain in the low 100s, 106 by Thursday. The forecast calls for sunny and hot temperatures and mostly clear skies, lows in the low 80s for your evenings. Sports, sponsored by Station Casinos STN Sports. Download the app and get a bonus up to $500 when you sign up. The NHL is going to the 2022 Olympic Games. The League, Players Association, and International Ice Hockey Federation announced that they reached an agreement to participate in the Beijing Games, scheduled to begin February 4th. Players fought for Olympic participation in a 2020 collective bargaining agreement extension after the NHL sat out in 2018. The league will now have a break in its schedule from February 7th to the 22nd in order to accommodate the games. Now locally, the Golden Knights could be represented on several teams during the Olympics, and we already know head coach Pete DeBoer will be an assistant on Team Canada's staff. In your entertainment news, sponsored by DiscoverYourNevada.com, brought to you by Travel Nevada, it's been a quarter century since rapper Tupac Shakur was killed here in Vegas. Review Journal's Michael Quine has the story. 25 years ago, on the evening of September 7, 1996, American rapper, actor, and poet Tupac Shakur is in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand for a Saturday night boxing match between Bruce Seldon and Mike Tyson. After the bout, Shakur's entourage recognizes a rival gang member, a fight breaks out, and the incident is captured on surveillance video. After the scuffle, Shakur and CEO of Death Records, Suge Knight, leave in Knight's black BMW headed for Club 662. 
They stop at a red light at the intersection of Flamingo Road and Koval Lane, where a white Cadillac pulls along the sedan's right side, lowers a window, and quickly fires 12 to 13 shots from a high-powered handgun. Shakur is hit four times. For six days, he remains in critical condition, but on Friday afternoon, September 13, 1996, Shakur is pronounced dead. Shock fans mourn worldwide, and to this day, rumors persist that Tupac is still alive. His killer has never been caught, but numerous conspiracies swirl around the murder and the elusive question, who shot Tupac Shakur? Sports betting, brought to you by the Las Vegas Paiute Tribal Smoke and Cigar Shop. At BetMGM, Trayvon Merrick is an 18-1 to ninth choice to win Defensive Rookie of the Year. Quarterback Derek Carr is 80-1 to to win MVP, and Josh Jacobs is a 250-1 to to win MVP. Carr is the 40-1 to 17th choice for most regular season touchdowns. Jacobs is the 25-1 to 12th choice for most regular season rushing touchdowns. And tight end Darren Waller is the 25-1 to 15th choice for most regular season receiving touchdowns and the 18 to 1 eighth pick for most receptions. In your business news, sponsored by Bank of Nevada, Bank on Accountability, a new national ad campaign for Resorts World looks to make the Strip's latest property the obvious choice for visitors. Captain Obvious is a Hotels.com pitchman portrayed by Brandon Moynihan. He is featured in the new campaign that shows him dashing through the new property and sampling its food, nightlife, and entertainment options. The goal is to drive even more traffic to Resorts World, which brought in nearly $15 million in revenue the first six days it was open. In your lifestyle news, sponsored by Oakmont of Las Vegas Assisted Living and Memory Care, the best care for the best life, fewer people are physically visiting public libraries these days, but virtual visits have been through the roof. The Las Vegas Clark County Library District says its website got over 19 million page views from July 1st to June 30th. That's a 23% increase from the year before. We're doing a lot of amazing things here at the library, really expanding our digital footprint, really reaching out to the public and we are continuing with our mission to serve the community. Thank you for watching 7 at 7 a.m. I'm Renee Summerauer. If you have an Amazon Fire TV, search Review Journal to download our channel. Watch Las Vegas breaking news streaming live on your OTT device. And if you're watching 7 at 7 on YouTube, don't forget to give us a like and hit that subscribe button down below. We'll see you back here later today for 7 at 7 p.m. From all of us here at the Las Vegas Review Journal, have a great day. Review Journal Studio, sponsored by Adam Kuttner. Get the maximum settlement as quickly as possible. This 7 at 7 update, sponsored by Pro Group Management. You're watching 7 at 7 from the Las Vegas Review Journal.